I will not uh, spend many words on uh, Professor Van Hoff, who I believe is well known here. I would just mention that she has published extensively on the intellectual culture, not just of late antiquity, I believe her first book was on Plutarch, uh, but mostly on late antiquity in recent years. Uh, I think she averages about one book per year now and uh, has edited uh, rather a number of texts recently, uh, including such diverse things as Jordanis and uh, Fragmentary of, 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 well, both the post Eusebian times and, and the Latin ones as well. And her current work is on Latin and Greek letter writing, and I believe that her paper today is indeed derived from that project as it is titled. Um, <laughs> well, just need to find it. Migration and mobility to, from, and through Palestine in the letters of Libanius. Uh, so, first of all, thank you very much for your patience and for giving me the opportunity uh, to speak to you uh, remotely, uh, which is also not my preferred uh, option, but thank you very much that this can happen uh, nevertheless. I'm going to uh, start uh, sharing my screen with you, and I hope that that's uh, works. Um, I can't see you anymore, so if anything goes wrong, uh, please uh, send a message in the chat or uh, uh, speak up because I uh, can't see you or hear you at this uh, moment. Uh, so, I'm going to uh, talk to you today about migration and mobility to, from and through Palestine in the letters of Libanius. Um, just for those of you who might not be uh, familiar with Libanius, um, uh, Libanius was a professor of Greek rhetoric who lived in Antioch, so not uh, too uh, far from Palestina in uh, the course of the 4th uh, century. So his life spans most of the 4th uh, century. Um, he was not a Christian, so he was a, a pagan. Uh, and what we have left of him are uh, some 64 orations, uh, a whole series of declamations of prognosmata, so rhetorical exercises, uh, but also uh, 1,544 uh, letters, which makes that Libane is actually uh, the largest classical uh, Greek and Latin for that matter, so the, the largest classical uh, letter collection that has been uh, transmitted uh, to us from antiquity. And this, um, yeah, this mass of letters really uh, has uh, thus far uh, been mined for data. For example, it's one of the most important uh, sources for the first volume of the uh, prosopography of the later uh, Roman Empire. And you see that also in uh, the uses that have been made of the letters of Libanius uh, for uh, studying uh, Palestina in antiquity. Because as we will see in a bit more detail uh, further on, uh, the letters of Libanus, or several uh, letters of Libanus, have been used uh, to uh, discuss um, what kind of contours the province of Palestina took and when it was divided and into what, which uh, parts and at what uh, point in time. However, thus far there has not yet been uh, made any study of Palestina as a whole, as a region, in uh, the letters of Libanius, or for that matter, in, uh, in the whole of the oeuvre of Libanius. Why is that? Uh, well, uh, because it's not so simple uh, to define what we mean when we uh, study Palestina in the letters of uh, Libanius. Of course, a number of letters I think in, in total there are some 40 um, uh, mentions of Palestina in the letters of Libanius. So th these are letters, obviously, uh, that will be uh, included in any study of uh, the region or the province in uh, the letters of Libanius. But then there are also uh, numerous letters where uh, Palestina or particular cities, of course, in uh, Palestina are not uh, uh, mentioned, uh, but we, of which we still know that, for example, when he's writing uh, to a person of whom we know that he was governor in that year uh, of the province of uh, Palestina, then, of course, we can say that that letter is also uh, as much related to uh, Palestina. What I forgot to say is that also when he mentions, uh, uh, say, uh, Caesarea, Caesarea, uh, then, of course, it's also up to us uh, to determine which Caesarea uh, that, that was, whether it is the Caesarea in uh, Palestina or, or not. So that's another difficulty uh, we uh, face. And then, uh, last but not least, of course, there is an evolution in uh, the territory of uh, the province of, of 
Palestina, uh, which is uh, partly uh, mirrored or echoed in the letters of, of Libanius, but which makes, of course, that, uh, well, we need to make sure that we know what we're talking about uh, when we when we uh, look at these letters. So do we, for example, include the letters that uh, uh, deal with the city of Elusa, uh, which is uh, which is in the south, as, as you know, of course. Um, and so do we include that or not? And for this paper, I have uh, taken a maximalist uh, view so every letter uh, that of which we know uh, in one way or another that it was uh, sent to or relates to uh, Palestina in the largest uh, sense or including uh, the south uh, the, the, the Negev uh, I have uh, included in uh, this uh, analysis that I will present to you uh, today and if you do that we end up with about a uh, hundred uh, letters uh, that deal with uh, Palestina in some way or other, so that are either sent there or talk about it or uh, are given to people from Palestina who travel elsewhere, as we will see, of course, uh, very important for the theme of mobility. So a bit more than 100 letters, which means that no less than 6%, 6 percent, 6.5 percent of the letters of Libanius are uh, to do with uh, Palestina. Um, or, or to do with Palestine or with somebody uh, coming from there or uh, traveling uh, there, which is, of course, a considerable amount of letters, considerable number of letters. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, to first give you an overview of uh, what these letters are, who they are addressed to, what they try to do, and then zoom in on uh, what we can learn about mobility uh, to, through and from uh, Palestina in uh, those uh, letters. Um, the most famous letters of Libanius that have to do with Palestina are no doubt the eight uh, letters which uh, Libanius uh, addressed uh, to the uh, patriarch. Um, which, of course, were also included in the uh, Stern's volume of uh, uh, the uh, Greek and Latin authors on Jews and uh, Judaism, um, so which were translated also as a group uh, together, which is not the case, I should add, uh, for the letters of Libanius. So several letters have been translated, but many of the letters I will be talking about today have never uh, been uh, translated. But I have heard from Moran that that may uh, change in the near uh, future. Um, so these letters, which are addressed uh, uh, to the patriarch as such, to uh, the uh, these letters date, we know, from the years 388 to 393 AD. And we know, of course, that the patriarch at that uh, point in time was uh, Gamaliel, who was in office from 388 uh, to uh, 415. Uh, Gamaliel was uh, well connected as a person. He held an honorary prefecture for a, a, a period of time, um, and he also uh, was very involved in uh, Roman uh, politics, ensuring, for example, uh, that Hesychius, uh, who was a man of, of consular uh, rank, uh, was uh, and who had uh, served uh, as, a, as a provincial governor, uh, was uh, executed by uh, Theodosius II. Just uh, to give you an idea of uh, the, the, the amount or uh, the degree up to which uh, Gamaliel as a patriarch was involved in politics as well. Uh, Libanius, as I said, uh, wrote uh, eight uh, letters to uh, the Patriarch. You see them uh, listed here uh, with their date. Uh, and I think, well, the most famous one is probably uh, the first one listed here, so letter 914, in which um, it is clear that the Patriarch had previously written uh, to Libanius about anti-Hebraic uh, violence. Scholars did agree a bit on what this uh, might uh, refer to. We can discuss that in the in the uh, Q and A if you if you like. Um, but in any uh, case, so it's not specified in any case in the letter what the violence is. But Libanius expresses the greatest sympathy uh, for the Jewish uh, people. He distances himself uh, from any kind of involvement, involvement or even sympathy uh, for this uh, violence, and he uh, tries to reassure uh, the. Patriarch by saying that Lucianus, the governor uh, of Syria, no longer holds uh, power and that therefore uh, the Jews should not be uh, afraid. Uh, 
So this is perhaps the letter that stands out uh, most in the series of eight uh, letters. The other letters are uh, letters of types that we will uh, uh, encounter on the next slide as well in, 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 in um, his letters to other uh, kinds of people in uh, Palestina. So they are, um, well, as you see here, recommendation letters. Uh, so letters with which uh, Libanus recommends uh, somebody uh, to somebody else. They are also intervention letters. Um, and as a, as a letter of intervention, I define a letter which recommends somebody, but in a very specific circumstances. So somebody who is involved in some kind of specific trouble uh, and who is being helped. That's what I what I mean here by uh, intervention. For example, very interesting an intervention for a woman, Amonila, um, uh, who is in trouble and uh, Lamenis writes to the patriarch to ask that he uh, would support uh, her. And he also refers in that letter to a previous letter he wrote to the patriarch for uh, Amonila. Um, so, um, um, yeah, we know that there are more uh, that more uh, communication between Libanis and the uh, Patriarch must have happened than just the eight letters which we have uh, here. Um, then um, the other interesting thing to note in the letter is that uh, one of the letters, namely one th letter number 1097, uh, is addressed not toi patriarchai, but tois patriarchais. Um, and um, so he is here writing to more uh, than one uh, patriarch. So presumably, uh, as scholars have pointed out, that is uh, to the patriarch and the council, uh, the kind of consistorium surrounding uh, the patriarch. Uh, and it is uh, a question um, to uh, have uh, an apostolos, so a, a person who travels a lot for the Jews, uh, who is now old, uh, to uh, ask the patriarch, to, the patriarchs, uh, to allow him to stop uh, traveling, to settle either where he is or else to return home uh, to uh, Palestina. Um, this is interesting, not just because this is the one letter where he addresses Tois Patriarchais, but also because uh, the next letter in the collection, so 1098, uh, is addressed Toy au Toy, so to the same person, but then in the singular uh, again. Um, so either we assume that a letter has dropped out and that it should be addressed toy out toy, so uh, 98,098, should be addressed to a different person, or if we assume uh, that it is uh, addressed to Toi Patriarchai, so to Gamaliel again, uh, it's interesting because um, it testifies to the fact that the, the son of the adversary is studying with Libanius. So it is an important question whether this is addressed to the patriarch, to Gamaliel or not, because if it is, it means uh, that uh, um, his son, Gamaliel's son, was uh, studying uh, with uh, Libanius. Um, and also because uh, this son apparently first uh, studied somewhere else, ran away from there, and then uh, came to uh, Libanius. Um, so what is clear in any case from these uh, uh, eight letters is that Libanius had a good um, and also a long-lasting uh, relationship with the relig religious uh, leadership in uh, Palestine. Um, um, Long lasting, of course, we're talking only about five years, but in 3193, uh, uh, Libanius passed away. Uh, so it is, uh, he starts writing to Gamaliel when Gamaliel becomes the patriarch. Um, and uh, he uh, uh, writes uh, to him, he communicates to him until the final uh, year of his uh, life. So these are the most famous letters, um, but far more numerous actually than the eight letters to the patriarch are the letters which Libanius addressed to governors in Palestina. Uh, here we're talking about uh, no less than 46 letters in total, which means that uh, uh, roughly 50% of all the letters Libanius, all the letters in Libanius letter collection which relate to Palestina are letters which he addressed to uh, governors. Um, 
Several governors uh, stand out. Uh, most of all, of course, uh, the man you see on the third uh, row here, Clematius, who received uh, 14 letters. Then there are two governors, uh, Cyrillus and Priscianus, who each received seven letters. And then there are uh, two governors uh, who received four letters each, and that's Leontius and Siborius. The others uh, receive uh, only uh, one or two uh, letters. So this means that um, except for the years uh, 359 and 391, um, Libanius, in every year in which uh, we have uh, letters of him, which are not all years, uh, I, I should say, so we have letters of Libanius dating from 355 to 365, uh, and then again from 388 to 393. So except for the years that you see here and that I just mentioned, um, we have a letter, at least one letter of Libanius addressed to a governor of uh, Palestina. And that means, of course, that Libanius is one of our most important sources on uh, governors of uh, Palestina. Um, he is, as a matter of fact, uh, the source of one uh, of the sources for 16 out of the 27 uh, known governors in the PLRE uh, for uh, uh, Palestina. So he's, he's really important in that uh, respect. For a long time also, um, because of these letters to uh, governors, um, these numerous letters to governors, scars assumed that Libanius uh, was one uh, of the most important witnesses to the split of uh, the splitting of the uh, province. And they referred especially to uh, letters 315, 21 and uh, 30 uh, for, uh, for that, uh, in, in that uh, respect. So in letter uh, 334, uh, for example, that's the first passage here on the, uh, on the slide, um, Libanius uh, states that it, it's no longer of use uh, to write to a governor about Elusa because uh, it's no longer part of his uh, jurisdiction, so it no longer falls under his uh, authority. Um, because Palestina, as you see here, uh, has been uh, uh, split. Um, there are other passages which have been taken into account uh, much less, uh, such as letter uh, 686, which is the second uh, passage here, uh, where uh, Libanius congratulates uh, a governor because he, have moved, he has moved es palestinen ek palestines, so from one Palestina to another uh, Palestina. So this letter is a, a few years uh, later, um, and also uh, seems to talk about more than one uh, province in uh, the region. Um, and uh, these letters uh, basically induced Zeke, uh, Otto Zeke, uh, Zebras, and uh, also Jones in the uh, PLRE, PLRE uh, to decide that the province of Palestina was split in two in 358. But that has been uh, since then uh, recalled or questioned, uh, first of all, by uh, uh, Meyerson, who did a specific study on uh, the letters of Libanius uh, and what they tell uh, about uh, the split of the province, and who came to the conclusion that we have a split only from uh, AD uh, 390 onwards. Although, I must say personally, I have, I have not studied uh, this uh, in detail. I have looked at the secondary uh, literature which you uh, uh, see listed uh, here. Uh, but Meyerson, for example, is one of the scholars who uses only the three uh, letters uh, mentioned um, mentioned a bit uh, higher up on the on the slide, and who does not refer to letter six eighty six. So I I'm not sure how that could fit in uh, with the idea that there was only a second province of uh, Palestina uh, created around AD uh, three uh, ninety. Um, so that's 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 really a, a question there, uh, which I'm not sure uh, how to move it uh, how to move it uh, further. Uh, but definitely, for those who are interested in, in the question, the letters of Libanius are uh, important. Um, so what do what does Libanius do? Why did he write these letters to governors? Well, I think you have the full. A uh, range of kinds of letters which Libanius is uh, writing. First of all, we have on the on the, on the lowest level, if you want, uh, letters of introduction, letters with which he uh, introduces a person who is traveling somewhere to somebody else, somebody who the 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 the, the, uh, the mentionee, so the, the person who carries the letter, um, is then not known to the other person. For example, uh, a letter in which he uh, introduces Boetus to Africanus. 
Then um, in bold, which means that there are many of those letters, uh, we have a series of uh, a whole series of recommendation letters. I think these are the most frequent uh, letters, type of letters which Libanius uh, uh, sends to uh, governors of Palestina, where he basically recommends one person to to the governor, but in very general terms. So here comes, uh, uh, in this case, Helpidius, please look kindly upon uh, him. Uh, next, we have a, a series of uh, intervention uh, letters, with which, uh, as I said before, Labanius uh, intervenes in a concrete uh, case. Uh, for example, uh, when he writes to the governor Simpletius for Boetus, Boetus is clearly uh, in some kind of trouble. We don't know exactly what it is, but it is very clear that Labanius is here asking something specific, a specific kind of help in a specific uh, circumstances. Next, we have letters of what I call suffragium, so where Libanius tries to get somebody a, um, a some kind of job, for example, for the brothers Bassus and Talasius, he tries to get uh, to, to ask Leontius whether he cannot use them uh, in his court as a judge, as for example, as assessors. Then uh, there, are, there are not many letters of suffragium uh, which Libanius sends to uh, Palestina. We do have, however, many letters of intercession, so where Libanius tries to uh, move the governor in a court case, where he tries to influence uh, the judicial uh, decision of uh, the governor as a judge in uh, the provincial uh, court. Uh, for example, uh, when uh, the slaves of Iamblichus of Apamia uh, have, have run away and rebelled and they have uh, sought refuge, but Libanius asks uh, that uh, the governor, Siberius, be very strict and uh, punish uh, the slaves and send them back, of course, to Iamblichus. And then, finally, we have two letters uh, with which Libanius is really engaging in uh, lobbying. Uh, lobbying, so trying to uh, influence official decisions, um, but not in a court case or uh, or, or not in a, in a job appointment. And this is a type of letter which is not very current in the whole of the 1544 letters of Libanius. So these letters really uh, stand out. Uh, and there are two very interesting uh, letters which were also included in uh, uh, Norman's, uh, in translation, in Norman's uh, love edition of uh, Libanius. Uh, these are both letters uh, addressed uh, to the governor Priscianus, um, and uh, in these letters, uh, on, in the first letter, Libanius lobbies for the Antiochian Jews on the appointment of uh, a new uh, leader for them. Uh, because he has heard, or the Jews in Antioch has, have heard, that somebody would be appointed as their leader whom they really do not want. And what Libanius tries to get from Priscianus, so from the governor, mind you, not from, uh, not directly from uh, Gamalia, uh, he uh, tries uh, to ensure that somebody else will be appointed as uh, the leader of the uh, Jews in uh, Antioch. In the second of these uh, lobbying letters, uh, it's again addressed to Priscianus, and it's a letter in which uh, Libanius asks uh, to uh, stop any violence or to make sure that there is no violence committed against, against the Manichaeans in uh, Palestina. So here he is taking up uh, uh, the, the cause of uh, another smaller uh, religious uh, group in Palestina. So these letters really stand out because they are not uh, uh, very frequent in uh, the letter collection. On the other hand, uh, it should also be emphasized that Labanius is not only asking something from uh, the governors of Palestina, but he also helps uh, 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 these uh, governors. Uh, he uh, helps um, uh, he helps, for example, the governor Clematius, who has taken a, a number of decisions, and Libanius defends these decisions with the prefect of the Orient, uh, Strategis Musunianus, who was based in Antioch. Um, also, for example, uh, Libanius lobbies with the Comes Orientis uh, to ensure another governorship for the governor Cyrillus. Um, and uh, also in the last letter uh, uh, mentioned here, so Labanius puts pressure on Priscio uh, to accept the reconciliation terms offered by uh, Hilarius. Um, so uh, it's not only the case that Labanius 
asks something from these governors, he also offers uh, them his uh, help. So he's also a mediator for the governors, not just for other people with uh, the uh, governors. So we have the, the eight letters to the um, uh, to the patriarch. We have uh, some uh, 50 letters uh, to uh, governors of Palestine. And then uh, finally, the, the largest group, which covers almost all uh, the other letters related to Palestine, uh, are uh, letters addressed to uh, either rhetoricians uh, or professors of rhetoric uh, and to uh, advocates. Uh, here we're talking about uh, some 25 letters, uh, some 30 letters in total, um, and uh, they are mostly uh, recommendation letters of uh, students, but also, of course, some introductions and some interventions. So the same type of letters, but uh, fewer categories of uh, types of letters than, for example, to the uh, governors. So this is a very brief overview of the hundred odd uh, letters uh, uh, of Libanese concerned with uh, Palestina. What I want to... I want to... I want to... I want to... Hello? I'm not sure whether you can still hear me. Um, I could hear an intervention from you at uh, just a minute ago. Um, I will continue, and if not, you need to you need to stop me. Uh, if you, I think, if you send something in the chat, uh, I will be able. To, it will pop up on my uh, screen. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I uh, saw in the chat that you can uh, hear me. That's uh, reassuring. So, in the remainder of my paper, I want to zoom in on what we can learn specifically for the purposes of this conference. What we can learn. Uh, from uh, the letters of Libanius uh, about mobility uh, to, from, and uh, through uh, Palestina. Um, and I think uh, here uh, three big categories uh, can again be discerned. Um, the first one is one uh, which follows very logically from what I have just uh, already told you about the fact that uh, about the half of the letters of Libanese connected to Palestina are addressed to governors. So uh, for government, but also, of course, for administrators uh, uh, who kind of uh, work on the officia of the uh, uh, of the governors, uh, there is a lot of uh, mobility um, uh, involved. Uh, first of all, of course, well, in, in general, um, as as I'm sure you know, uh, in principle, one did not become a governor of one's own province. So every governor. Um, coming into Palestina was somebody traveling there. Um, and so all the governors you have seen listed on my earlier uh, slide traveled to uh, Palestina in order to take up uh, their um, uh, to take up their position. Um, apart from Libanese, we also know, of course, from other sources about other uh, governors. I've, I've told you, uh, we know about uh, uh, 16 out of 27 uh, uh, governors on the basis of Libanus, but also all these others, of course, also traveled uh, to Palestina. Um, at the same time, of course, there were also people from Palestina uh, who governed uh, other uh, provinces. And two of these people are discernible in uh, the letter collection of Libanus, namely Iunus, uh, who uh, was from Palestina and became uh, consularis of Syria before uh, 392, so we don't know the year exactly. And on the other hand, uh, Maximus, who was from uh, Raffia, uh, and who became a governor first of Armenia, uh, then of Galatia, uh, and who also at some point seems to have become uh, the prefect of uh, Egypt. Um, and with whom Libanese corresponded quite a lot, because uh, during his uh, governorship of Galatia, uh, during Maximus's uh, governorship of Galatia, his wife and his sons uh, lived in uh, Antioch uh, and uh, uh, had frequent contacts with uh, Libanius. Um, a second um, kind of typical kind of mobility, which we uh, see very uh, vividly in the correspondence of Libanius, is uh, mobility connected with uh, higher education. Uh, first of all, first of all, uh, student uh, mobility. 
Um, here we have uh, quite a lot of outbound uh, mobility in the sense that we know that uh, eight, uh, yes, eight uh, students of Libanius throughout his career uh, of eight students, we know for sure that they came from Palestina. There may have been more, but we don't know the geographical uh, provenience of all of Libanius' uh, students, but definitely uh, uh, of eight uh, of his students, we know for sure that they came from Palestina. Um, also, um, so these are eight people, but we also know of people who did not so much uh, study with Libanius uh, as students or as his students, but who were fellow students of uh, Libanius. For example, Chromatius uh, studied with Libanius in uh, uh, in Athens. Lematius studied with uh, Li Libanius in uh, Athens, uh, and we also know of other people who studied, who went, who came from uh, Palestine and went to study in Athens. Uh, but were not uh, fellow students of uh, Libanius, uh, as is the case, for example, of uh, a man called Helpidius, uh, who studied in Athens and then taught uh, rhetoric for a while in Palestina, so who then returned, basically, uh, to uh, Palestina, uh, and who then, uh, again, moved out uh, and moved to Bithynia and to, to, uh, to Constantinople uh, to work there as an advocate presumably uh, when his school was not very uh, successful. On the other hand, we also have quite a bit of inbound uh, student uh, mobility. Um, we know that uh, a man called Pakakius, who was a, a teacher for a while uh, in, in Antioch, uh, had a school of rhetoric in uh, uh, Caesarea. Uh, in Palestina, uh, obviously, uh, and uh, we have various recommendation letters uh, for students uh, which Labenis sends along with these students when they go to study with Akakius uh, there. Um, we So we have a, a whole range of recommendation letters, as I said, there are quite a lot of recommendation letters in the letters to, uh, to teachers of uh, rhetoric. But we also know from other sources that uh, uh, Palestina must have uh, attracted quite a number of uh, students. There is, for example, Gregory of Nazianzus, who studied rhetoric with a man called Tespasius in uh, Caesarea before he went to uh, Alexandria and then to Athens. Uh, we also know that there is a school of there was a school of law in uh, Caesarea, less famous and perhaps also less frequented, therefore, than the law, the famous law school in in Beirut, and there were law schools elsewhere as well. Uh, but still, that must have caused inbound uh, mobility. Um, and also, of course, Gaza, uh, we don't know any names of sophists of the fourth century, for example. So there's no uh, named, uh, no letters to uh, professors or, or rhetoricians in Gaza in the corpus of Libanius. But of course, uh, two centuries later, we do have, uh, one, one and a half century later, we do have uh, uh, various names. So Gaza must have been an important educational center and so also uh, uh, ha must have attracted quite a number of uh, students. Um, okay, I see a message here about, uh, um, yeah, about the, the q and A. I will uh, look at that uh, later. Um, if we turn to teachers, um, then the logical corollary of student outbound mobility is, of course, uh, that uh, uh, inbound mobility of uh, uh, teachers. Uh, and there, uh, a very interesting passage comes not from a letter, but from an oration, Oration 31 uh, uh, of Libanis, which is an oration with which he tries uh, to move the city council of Antioch to support uh, the teachers in his, uh, the assistant teachers in his uh, school, and to support education in Antioch more generally. And he states there, uh, and I quote from the uh, 42nd uh, paragraph, it is inter intolerable and unpardonable for the people of Antioch to have less regard for learning than those of Caesarea, who by lavish promises induced one of your teachers to pick a lesser city in preference to the greater. So uh, induced them to, uh, to go to uh, Caesarea rather than stay in Antioch. And now he possesses what they promised, uh, namely a great school and uh, uh, a, a quite lavish uh, payment. So this is a reference uh, to uh, Akakius, who was so who is a Palestinian who moved out for a while to teach in Antioch, but who then returned uh, to Palestina to teach uh, there. Um, 
and I think Akakius in on his own already shows both the inbound and the outbound uh, uh, movement uh, in the sense that he first went away uh, from uh, Palestine and then uh, returned there to uh, teach. So that's student and staff, teaching staff and mobility, but there is also a kind of school related or education related uh, mobility uh, in the sense that uh, one of Libanus's, uh, uh, well helpers in his very last days and one of the people offering him most consolation uh, was Theophilus, who also came from uh, Palestina. Um, and that brings me to the third uh, big uh, kind of um, information on uh, mobility in Palestina in Labenis' letters, and that is travel. Um, first of all, the delivery of letters. So we should not forget that every single letter which we have of Labenis that uh, uh, went to Palestina was carried there by somebody and uh, vice versa when he receives a letter from Palestina that means that people are traveling and I think that the letters of Labinus show just how much just the sheer variety and the, the sheer frequency of traveling that there must have uh, been. Uh, but then, uh, of course, there is not just travel to uh, or between uh, Palestina and Antioch uh, that we can see in Labenis' letters, but also travel through Palestina. And most notably there, uh, although we're not talking about big groups of letters, so we're talking about 10, 15 letters, no, 10, 5 to 10 letters uh, in total, uh, we see that there are letters uh, coming from Egypt to uh, Antioch, which are uh, 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 traveling through uh, Palestina. Um, for example, uh, one of the very last letters in the collection, letter 1537, uh, is a letter addressed to a man called Andromachus, uh, who is in Egypt. Uh, and it's uh, in that letter, Libanus thanks him for sending uh, pigeons. And he thanks him particularly because these letters um, were carried by Eustochius, who was uh, from uh, Palestina, and who uh, uh, it, the letter really makes it clear that he was not just from Palestina, but he also traveled through Palestina on his way from uh, Egypt uh, to Antioch. Um, but also, for example, letter 602 is a request to the governor Clematius, uh, and uh, Libanus asks uh, the governor uh, to give a letter of recommendation uh, to a man called Olympias, who is traveling to Italy. So this is a letter from uh, Antioch to Palestina, because somebody is traveling from Antioch through Palestina to Italy. Yeah, and Libanius, uh, uh, um, uh, Libanius letters make it clear that uh, this uh, uh, is that this is happening, so that people are that uh, uh, Olympus is traveling uh, through uh, Palestina. Um, I see another um, yes. Um, I will come to my final uh, slide. Uh, namely, uh, what can we conclude about uh, mobility uh, in uh, the letters of uh, from, from the letters of Libanus? First of all, I think that there is a, a great deal of mobility, and that's exemplified, I think, m most clearly uh, and first and foremost by these very frequent epistolary contacts. And as I indicated, we don't just have a hundred letters, which is already a lot, but these hundred letters, several of these letters, make clear that other contacts have happened before or will happen uh, afterwards. And then, uh, on the one hand, I think there is, we see necessary mobility in the sense that this is mobility uh, of, say, governors who, of course, when they become governor of Palestina, have to travel uh, to Palestina, or teachers who cannot find a job anywhere else, or lose their job, their popularity as a teacher, say, in Antioch, who travel then uh, to Palestina. But there is also a lot of uh, voluntary uh, uh, mobility. Uh, especially um, in the field of uh, education. And that uh, notwithstanding a, uh, a strong rhetorical uh, education in Palestina. So that uh, Palestina attracts students because it has this uh, strong mobility, but it, it also continues to send out uh, uh, students uh, to other educational uh, centers. So I think that that's um, what we can learn uh, from the letters of Labinis about mobility to, from, and through uh, Palestina. Thank you. So uh, thank you indeed very much for, for, this, uh, for this talk, uh, for this overview of Libanius's letters, and indeed for teasing out the implications for different kinds of mobility uh, to and from Palestine. 
Uh, I assume there are people here in the audience who actually have sensible questions to ask, so I will not bother you with anything I can come up with. Uh, who would like to ask the first question? And I believe that you would... Does it work on the, on the mobile microphone as well? Yeah, okay, so you don't have to come up here. So just, just uh, raise your hands and you will be delivered a microphone. Yes, over there, please. Thank you. There is one question uh, I would like to ask uh, concerning the, uh, how the system worked. I understand it worked, but how did it work? Because the, uh, Mr. A wants to write to, from Antioch or from wherever to Mr. B somewhere else. Now, as you uh, as you mentioned, this means that someone took the letter from A to B. He must have traveled there. But that um, leaves me with the question, how many people were actually traveling? I want to write to my relatives in Amsterdam. Uh, there must be someone who actually travels to Amsterdam, or do I wait half a year till someone is actually going there. This, um, you can't assume that people were traveling all the time from A to B uh, and from uh, Antioch to Ghent. So have you any idea about the background to this question? And, and, and. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that question. Uh, well, the, the answer, if you uh, were looking in Antioch for somebody uh, traveling to Ghent or Amsterdam, uh, the answer would be you would probably have to wait uh, for well more than, uh, than than half a year. No, but all, all jokes aside, um, I think uh, that uh, the amount of traveling or the frequency of traveling that the ancient world must have known is just staggering i mean if you uh, if you look at the letter collection of uh, libanius um he seems to be writing uh, uh, letters every day almost uh, so we have of, of the years of which we have letters, we have about, we have about uh, uh, 100 letters um uh, per year so that's one letter every uh, uh, three days of course, some of these letters, uh, are, or say you have five letters in a row, which all go to uh, Kaisaria in uh, Palestine. That presupposes only one uh, one uh, journey. But I think uh, Libanius, we we have the mo most letters of his. But that does not mean that there were not other people uh, also writing letters and writing many letters. So I think, and also if you look at papyrus archives, the amount of traveling uh, that must have gone on is just uh, staggering. How did that work? Uh, well, two ways. Uh, either, uh, and that's what Labanius very often does, uh, either, and I guess that that's also the preferred way of doing it. Either uh, you know that somebody uh, will be traveling or you send somebody to travel to the place where you want your letter or letters uh, to go. Um, and why is that the preferred way of coming? First of all, because you're sure that that person whom you know will, or more sure that he uh, will actually deliver a letter. But also because very often, all messages were transmitted with this letter carrier uh, alongside the written uh, letter. For example, in introduction letters, etc., it's often said like, okay, this man will tell you more about uh, uh, himself. Or in intercession letters, in judicial cases, uh, the person carrying this letter will instruct you in more detail about uh, what is required or what the background to this uh, process is. The other big option, if you don't know every, uh, don't know or don't own or uh, uh, anybody uh, who travel who is traveling or whom you can ask to travel in the direction uh, you want uh, your letter to go and then indeed you wait for somebody to travel in that uh, direction but in Libanius it's it's extremely rare that we, I mean in most letters I think three quarters of the letters perhaps and mention the person who is carrying uh, who is carrying uh, the letters uh, so a lot and that's also if you read uh, literature about travel in the ancient world there must have been much more travel than we uh, than we think uh, if we take into account the difficulty of uh, of traveling in the ancient world 
Then, of course, there's a, the question how you travel. You could travel from Antioch to uh, Palestina overland, or you could travel uh, uh, over uh, overseas. And if you, I mean, I'm sure most many of you will be familiar with the Orbis tool, which the colleagues in Stanford have uh, developed. And for many uh, uh, trajectories, um, uh, traveling by sea must have been quicker uh, than uh, traveling uh, over overland. And then the last way, perhaps, which you can imagine uh, for letters to travel is, uh, is the cursus publicus. But, uh, uh, of course, that was only open uh, for the emperor, for very high uh, uh, government officials. And we uh, pr uh, probably it's not the case that uh, even provincial governors could not just make use of the cursus publicus or only a limited number of times a year. And uh, on top, if they wanted to use it more, they needed special permission. So that was not something they could use uh, to write to somebody like uh, Libanius, but perhaps they could use it uh, if they wanted to write for a fourth or fifth time a year uh, to the to the emperor. But so it's above all a question of knowing people who are traveling uh, somewhere or asking people uh, to travel uh, to the place where you want your letters uh, to be uh, delivered. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I imagine we are a bit pressed for time because of the original delay, but maybe we have time for another Maybe one more question, indeed. I, I saw someone just, just there. Did, did, no? Okay. Uh, does anyone want to ask a final question? Okay. Then, uh, yes, apologies. We have to cut this a bit short and go for lunch, uh, which uh, you are excluded from. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for your talk and for your discussion contributions. And, uh, yes, I hope you can contribute online for the future. Bye.